Hey, welcome back to Calculus. We're going to finish up section 6.3, continuing to talk about doing some integrals, volumes by shells. Last time we were only integrating around, uh, uh, our solids rotated around the y-axis. This time I wanted to be able to, to do it around any axis parallel to one of the two coordinate axes. And then uh, we're going to end with kind of a brief discussion about which method to use. You know, we have, we have two methods, washers and shells. For some regions, uh, uh, you can carry out the integration with either one. So I want to give you a little bit of a strategy for how to think about which one to try first. Uh, there is no universal strategy of what to work. It depends on the functions, what kind of antiderivatives and so on. But there is some sort of guidelines of, of, uh, of what you can try first. Okay, so let's just get going here. I think I want to motivate it just by an example. So here I've got a region, <clears throat> the region R. It's kind of drawn small in this picture here. It's just this region bounded by that red parabola and the blue line. The blue line is a vertical line. Its equation is x equals two. The parabola is not a function of x, but rather it's a function, or sorry, it's, yeah, it's a function of y. And it's given by that quadratic expression right there. Um, and so, well, I want to I want to rotate this thing about the x-axis, not the y-axis, and I'd like to find the volume. Okay, so if we're going to rotate it around the x-axis, if we were going to use washers, if we're going to use washers to do such a thing, then we need the we need the inner and outer radius in terms of x. So we'd have to solve uh, for y in terms of x. Uh, you can kind of see algebraically that that might be a little bit tricky to do because a, a typical segment, if I just draw it in red right there, this thing and this thing, well, they're on the same curve. And you can kind of see solving this y for y in terms of x in this equation is going to require taking a square root. That square root has positive value and a negative value. And we'll have to think about those things because that red curve is not, is not a function of x. It's a function of y. All right, so this kind of motivates the whole idea. I'd like to be able to do this not with a, a segment that's perpendicular to the axis of rotation, but one that's parallel to it, right? So, so I can leave everything in terms of y. I can use these functions of y. Uh, we're going to need to know the limits of integration. Uh, that is, we're going to need to know where these two curves cross. I think to keep this video short, I decided just to, to leave the details out, but what would you do? You would set the two equations equal to each other. So, so set two equal to one plus the quantity y minus two squared, and then you can stop the video and verify that that equation has two solutions. Uh, I'll just do some algebra on that thing, and you'll find that y is equal to one and y is equal to three, okay? So how are we going to proceed? How are we gonna modify our shell method? Here, I've just got the picture kind of blown up a little bit here. Put in that information we just discussed, y equals one and y equals three are the sort of extremes. And I wanna leave things in terms of y because that's how I was given them. Remember, this is the line x equals two. This is the parabola x is equal to one plus y minus two quantity squared. So, so uh, I've just labeled those points. If I pick a y value between one and three, well, this point uh, uh, is at the point two comma y, yeah, because x is two on that line, y is my variable. This point is, well, it's one minus y qu minus two quantity squared comma y, because it's on that parabola. All right, so what am I imagining? If I take this green segment, at height y, I think of the thickness of the pen here as my delta y. Well, that green segment, if we rotate it around the y-axis, I'm not gonna draw it, but it's gonna, it's gonna swing out a cylindrical shell. Yeah, it's gonna swing out a cylindrical shell. So, so what do we need to know to find the volume of that shell? That is, what do we need to know to make our local estimate over here? Well, we need to know the radius right, because we have to multiply it by two pi. So what's the radius? Well, the radius is the distance from the cylindrical shell, that is at height y, to the axis we're rotating around, which is y equals zero, the x-axis. Well, that, that distance is y, yeah? The distance from my cylindrical shell to the axis of rotation is y. So, so the two pi, I need to multiply it by y. That's my circumference or the length of our slab. Right, uh, referring back to that previous lecture. Uh, what about the height of the shell? 
Well, the height of the shell is literally the length in this picture of that green segment. That green segment has y coordinate equal to y, so its length is the difference of the x coordinates. You have to subtract in the right order. You take the bigger x coordinate, which is 2, and subtract the smaller x coordinate, which is 1 plus the quantity y minus 2 squared. So I'm just going to put that in without simplifying. I take 2 minus lots of parentheses to make no algebra errors here y minus 2 squared. Okay, so that's my thickness. So if you like, this is the length of the shell, the cylindrical shell. Sorry, length, the cylindrical shell. This is its uh, a height, rather. Uh, it's the height. of the cylindrical shell. And then what's its thickness? Well, its thickness is the change in the integration variable, change of y. Right, length times height times thickness is volume. So that's our local estimate. If we clean this up a little bit, I'm not gonna do much. I'll just subtract in the parentheses there. Two take away one is one. Uh, uh, and then I've got, sorry, this, uh, I made an algebra mistake. Uh, instead of editing the video, I'm just gonna correct it. That should be one plus. Uh, uh, and so, so when I distribute that minus sign through there, it would be then minus the quantity y minus 2 squared. Okay, so there's our local estimate. Uh, if we add those things together over all the uh, uh, partitions, the subintervals, then we get a Riemann sum. Taking the limit of that Riemann sum as, y, as delta y goes to 0 gives us an integral. So let me just kind of reveal the integral down here and let you look at it. Uh, what did I do? I, as my usual, I moved the 2 pi in front because it's a constant. So we can just see the pieces here. I've got y. Here's my 1 minus the quantity y minus 2 squared. Uh, um, and my dy uh, is what I get from delta y in the limit. It's the infinitesimal thickness of those shells. Okay, so it's the same idea, the same kind of setup. We're just going to integrate with respect to y because our shell is determined by the y variable, not the x variable. All right, I'm, uh, I'm not going to finish all the computations here. I did a little bit uh, uh, you, just to give you an idea of how you would integrate this. It's all polynomial, so you have to expand all that out. So stop the video and do this at your own speed, but square out y minus 2 squared. Push that minus sign through there carefully, gather your like terms, distribute the y through there, and you should get minus y cubed plus 4y squared minus 3. Okay, uh, pardon me, minus 3y, another typo. Let me fix that. When you distribute that y through there, it'd be minus 3y. And then you can check me. I hope you're nervous about it because I've made several mistakes so far in this video, but you can check that that integral comes out to be 16 pi over 3. Okay, so it's polynomial. I'm, I'm going to uh, not include the arithmetic calculations in these videos because it just makes them too long, and, and I don't think anybody in the universe wants to sit around watching me uh, add fractions on YouTube. All right, so you can come to me if you have any questions about how to perform those calculations, but I'm just going to put the answer there. Cool. So hopefully that example kind of illustrates that there's not, not really a big new idea that you need if you're trying to use shells around the x-axis. Uh, it's just that the integral ends up being with respect to y, and I'll speak about this at the end, but the integral ends up being with respect to y, well, because when we look at that shell for a given y to revolve around the axis, it depends on y, not on, on x. The height of the shell, if you like, where the shell comes from, it depends on y, not x. All right, let's look at another example. This one I've just kind of left raw. Uh, I'll try to do some of the details, but, but as soon as we get to the setup, I think I'll just give you the answer. But here R is given, uh, uh, it's a region bounded by, so this is the way a lot of your homework is done. It's bounded by three curves. All right, so you gotta graph those curves. You can do that in Desmos. Hopefully this f of x equals four minus two x is something that you can kind of visualize a graph of without technology, but it's okay if you wanna use Desmos. Uh, I'm just gonna make a real quick hand sketch over here. Let me give myself some coordinate axes, uh, uh, label them so my picture makes sense, x there's x and y. Four minus two x is a line with slope negative two and y intercept four, so I'm just gonna kind of schematically draw that in the picture like this would have x-intercept 2 and y-intercept 4. 
So there's my, my uh, function. And then y equals zero, well, that's the x-axis. x equals zero is the y-axis. So I can see the region R. The region R is this triangular region. And I'm gonna move it a little bit over to the right because I'm supposed to rotate that region around the line uh, x equals minus one. So let me show you where that might be. Let me draw it in a distinct color so it's clearer that it's the axis. Maybe make it a little bit uh, thicker. So if that's equal to two, I won't try to draw this too much to scale here, but maybe maybe x equals minus one is right there. Yeah, maybe that's the line x equals minus one. So that's the line that we want to rotate this thing around, okay? So it's not the y-axis. That's the point, it's not the y-axis. I'd still like to find the volume, but we're rotating this region around something that's different than the y-axis. We're rotating it around the line x equals minus one. If you can read that messy stuff down there, it was too thick there. Okay, well, we're gonna proceed kind of the same way. Uh, uh, I'd like to, um, I mean, we could certainly do this with, with um, washers, yeah? We'd have to solve uh, this equation. This equation currently is for y in terms of x. We would need x in terms of y, but for washers, a given segment would be a function of y, and we could easily determine our outer radius and our inner radius, does it make sense why I'm highlighting those points? Because I'm looking at the distance to the line x equals minus one. And we could proceed with washers, but the computation will actually be simpler if we proceed with shells, right? So when you're using shells, the ax or the, the uh, a shell, the, the segment that you're using to make your estimate is parallel to the axis of rotation. So if I pick a, uh, such a segment, I pick an x between zero and two, can you imagine in the picture this thing getting rotated around there? Here, I won't draw the shell, but I'll just draw a cylinder. Just think of the thickness of my pen as the thickness of the shell, if you like, the dx, right? So I need to be able to understand what happens when I roll that thing flat, what's its volume? I need to be able to make my local estimate. My local estimate. Well, okay, so what is the radius? Uh, 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 what, what I need to know the circumference of the shell. The circumference of the shell comes from this radius, right? I need to know how far away is the segment that's rotating from the axis. Well, uh, uh, the x-coordinate of this segment is x, but the distance to the axis is no longer x because the axis is minus one, right? So that distance, if I write it in here, would be a good color to do it and maybe I'll just draw it in black. That distance would be x take away minus one, right? I'm, I'm always subtracting the bigger number from the smaller number and I can see x is bigger than minus one because it's to the right of it, right? Bigger numbers on the x-axis are, are to the right. So that's why I'm subtracting x minus a minus one, not the other way around. So, so that's my radius, and that radius gets multiplied by two pi, and that's my circumference. All right, so the difference, let me pause for a second here. This is not an x, because the uh, axis of rotation isn't the y-axis, right? The distance from x to the y-axis is x, but the distance from x to minus one is x plus one. Let me just say, uh, if this axis had been something like uh, x equals three, then right here I would have used a three minus x, yeah? Because three is bigger than x for x is in this region. And I always subtract bigger minus smaller to get distance. Okay, so there's the circumference part. What's the height? The height of the shell is just the formula for f of x here because it's bounded by the y-axis. So I've got four minus two x for my height. The thickness is delta x. Here's my local estimate. So adding all of those things together should give an estimate for the volume, taking the limit as delta x goes to zero uh, uh, gives us the integral. So we should be able to write down the volume of this thing. I'm gonna put the two pi in front as is my habit. What are the limits of integration? Well, x varies between zero and two in this region. And then what do we have to integrate? x plus one, 
times 4 minus 2x. Remember, the 2 pi is already out front, dx. So there's your shell integral, your shell integral. This quantity, I'm calling it the radius. It's how far away the segment is from the axis of rotation. It's x plus 1 in this thing. So 2 pi times the radius times the shell height times dx for something parallel to the x-axis. In my, in my example, I know I'm talking fast. If I made this x plus 3, or sorry, if we were rotating the same region around the line, x equals 3, then there would have been a 3 minus x right there. If we're rotating around the line, x equals 10, there would have been a 10 minus x right there. It's always the distance from your shell segment to the axis of rotation. OK. Uh, in the name of short videos, you can check this, uh, uh, but I calculated this before I started this video. I think that you'll get 40 pi over 3. So multiply out that polynomial. It's good antiderivative practice. I don't mean to diminish it in all of these videos, but I'm just trying to keep them shorter. But that integral will multiply out to 40 pi over 3. Uh, uh, as always, uh, units cubed to volume. Cool. Let's try to kind of understand a little bit of this in general. All right. So I'm labeling this slide. I don't know if it's really a slide. General shell formulas. So what am I talking about? <clears throat> One of the most kind of general versions of this problem I can pose is I give you some region R. R is bounded by two functions of x y equals f of x and g of x in the picture f is bigger than g for x between two values a and b. And then I want to rotate that region uh, around uh, an axis parallel to the y-axis around a line x equals k for some constant k. Okay, I see a typo over here in my, in my slide. I'll fix it. So again, the idea is that you make a local estimate. Uh, 2 pi times the radius. What's the radius? The radius is the distance from the shell segment to the axis of rotation. So in this picture, that's x minus k. Yeah, x minus k is that distance. It's x minus k because x is greater than k in, for points in our region, greater than or equal to. Right, x is to the right of it. If it were the other way around, if the red line that we're rotating was over here, then I would have subtracted k minus x. It's very important that you understand that, that, that the order of subtraction will matter. Uh, there's kind of a built-in way to catch it. If you ever use these things with these things subtracted in the wrong order, your answer will come out to be negative. You'll get the negative of the volume, so you'll know something went wrong. Okay, but it's the distance from the segment to the axis of rotation subtracting in the right order. That's what I mean by the radius. What's the height? Well, the height is the height of the segment that's going to sweep out the shell. In this case, that's f of x minus g of x. That's kind of similar to finding the area between two curves, right? So more generally, it's top minus bottom. So everywhere there's an issue here of how to subtract, what order. Uh, uh, what's the thickness? Well, it's the thickness uh, of the shell. I, I think of it as the thickness of the green pen there, delta x. So that's your local estimate. You add those local estimates up. And uh, uh, you'd get uh, a Riemann sum for the approximation of the volume. Taking the limit of that Riemann sum as delta x goes to zero, you get the integral. So uh, once again, I'll put the 2 pi in front. It's a constant. A and b are the extreme values of x. And then I'm just taking this exact expression, changing delta x to dx. So that's kind of a general shell formula for rotating uh, around lines that are parallel to the uh, y-axis, lines of the form x equal k. Nice. If you were going to do such a volume with disks, this particular region would be kind of difficult, I think. But with disks, remember, the segment is perpendicular to the axis of rotation, so that the local estimate is not a cylindrical shell, but rather a disk. So here, given functions of x, and I'm going around a line parallel to the y-axis, I actually would prefer to use shells if I could, because the shell integral is going to be with respect to x, and I'm given things in terms of x. So, so, so I don't want to have to solve for x in terms of y unless I absolutely have to. 
say more about that in a minute. Here's sort of another possibility. Suppose uh, uh, we have some region that's bounded by functions of y. So here my region R is uh, uh, bounded by not functions of x, but functions of y. And I want to rotate that around a line where y is a constant, something parallel to the x-axis. Well, thinking along the same lines, I just need to think locally, this green segment, when I rotate it around the y-axis, is going to sweep out some cylindrical shell. There's patches making an appearance uh, in our calculus video. So uh, uh, when that green line rotates around that red uh, screen segment, rotates around the x-axis, around, around the line y equals k, it swings out a cylindrical shell. So how do, what's the volume of that shell? Well, it's two pi times the radius. What's the radius? Well, it's the distance from our green segment to the axis of rotation. If that green segment has coordinates y and the axis of rotation is k, in this picture, k is bigger than or equal to y for all points in the region. So that's why I'm subtracting in this order, k minus y. If the red line were down here, I would have subtracted in the other order. What's this f of y minus g of y? Well, that's the height of the shell. And again, notice I'm subtracting in the correct order. f of y is bigger than g of y, right? Those are x-coordinates, and x-coordinates get bigger to the right times the thickness of the shell. Take the limit as delta y goes to 0, uh, uh, and you uh, get the corresponding integral. Okay, sorry about all the barking. We're almost done here. Let's just end with sort of a strategy. Uh, uh, when to use washers versus shells? Um, it's sort of an oversimplification because it also depends on what you're trying to integrate. But this is kind of a, a generic piece of advice. So if, if you're given functions of x, okay, if you're given functions of x, then I'd want to integrate dx. I don't want to have to switch the variable in this half. So given functions of x, sorry about that, given functions of x, I want to integrate with respect to x. So, so uh, I want to do the integral dx. Okay, well, so if I'm going around the x-axis, then uh, uh, an, a segment is perpendicular to the x-axis, so I'm going to try to use washers to do that. Uh, if I'm going around the y-axis, then a fixed x segment is parallel to the y-axis, and so I'm going to try to use shells to do that. All right? It's the exact same kind of idea. If I happen to be given functions of y, well, then I want to do the integral dy, right? So if I'm going around the x-axis, then a segment is parallel to the x-axis, so I'm going to use shells. If I'm going around the y-axis, the segment is perpendicular to the axis, so I'm going to use washers. So that's the exact idea to think about here, is that in all of these cases, I'm just sort of trying to use the variable, the integration variable in, in the, the way the functions were given to me. If I'm given functions of x, I wanna do dx. If I'm given functions of y, I wanna do dy, all right? So then I just have to think about like, okay, well, if I'm going around the x-axis, if I fix an x value, then my segment is perpendicular to the axis. I'm gonna write that over here, segment perpendicular to the axis. So that's exactly why I would use washers because perpendicular segments sweep out washers. Uh, uh, and for shells, if, if, I, if I'm going around the y-axis, a segment with a fixed x value is parallel to the axis. So that's gonna give me shells. So the same thing down here. If I'm in given functions of y, I'd like to integrate dy. But then for a fixed value of y, if I'm going around the x-axis, that's parallel. So I should use shells. For a fixed value of y, if I'm going around the y-axis, that's perpendicular. So I want to use washers. Okay, well, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I hope you'll, I'll see you in a Zoom class. This the video can be kind of a backup. And uh, sorry about all the barking. <laughs>